Right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Welcome to New Life. Happy New Year to you, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in today. Glad you're here. Excited about our time together uh, today. We've got a challenge to end off on. Uh, got a, got a, a challenge for you to think about for this year. We've got some special guests that are going to be joining us here shortly. So uh, let's pray as we begin. Father, we we give you thanks. Uh, for this day, we give you thanks for who you are and, and this opportunity to, to turn our focus to you, to worship you, to acknowledge who you are. And we pray by your spirit that you would meet us, that you would encourage us, that you would stir within us uh, a desire, uh, an increased desire for you. So we pray that you would have your way with us in this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join the worship team now as they lead us in worship.
So I've been thinking about prayer lately. And I've been thinking that why is it for many of us that we have this, this sense of inadequacy with our prayer lives? We know prayer is important, but we're not praying as we'd like to. Why is it that we struggle in prayer? So perhaps you can relate here. We're going to be starting our winter series next week, January 9th. By looking at prayer, we're going to be looking at those questions and other questions as well in the area of prayer. The goal of this series is to increase our desire to pray, to, to, to increase our confidence as we pray, that we're not praying because we feel obligated or a sense of guilt, but that we're rediscovering the God whom we're praying to, or maybe discovering that God for the first time. The goal of this series is that we as a church will pray more. And so this is your invitation to join us starting next Sunday for I Pray. One of the things we did uh, going back a year ago, going back a year ago this time, starting in a new year, we, we put a challenge out to all of you to see who would, who would be up for the challenge of reading through the Bible in a year, in, in the 52 weeks of, of 2021, uh, to read through the Bible in those 52 weeks. And a number of you took that challenge. Uh, quite a number of you responded to that, which was awesome. And a number of you completed that challenge. I'm not sure exactly uh, all of you who completed it, but I know some of you completed it. And I know there's two people sitting here with me now who have completed that challenge, which is fantastic. Uh, so Janet McDonald and Rob Blanchard, two people who need no introduction, but uh, they have completed reading through the Bible uh, from cover to cover in 2021. And that, that's just fantastic to, to, to hear that, that you not only set it as a goal, but you've completed it. And so we're just going to ask uh, each of them just, just a couple questions here, uh, because, uh, because guess what? There's a challenge coming this year as well. And so, uh, so just want to just wanna ask them, and I don't know whoever wants to go first here, but, but, but how, would you say, how would you say that God used this 52-week commitment, reading through the Bible, how did God use that in your life? Janet, you want to start? I will. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity because I love talking about um, God's Word and the things I'm learning. And uh, I would say the first thing uh, is just he used it in, I just was in his presence for so much time as I read the scriptures. Um, it, they become a personal story you kind of join the story god's story as you read it and um it had it just every day it would have an effect on my on my thinking um and i just saw how god was so connected in the story uh to the people to the people of god and um the intimacy in his knowledge of them and, yeah, I guess <laughs> that's enough for now. That's awesome. Awesome. Rob. Um, so, Pastor, you use the, uh, the term commitment. And, and it, it really is a commitment. You commit to, to read. You commit to, to, to do it, to take that time. And, and so you develop a, a, that discipline. And it's so key because it is really a spiritual discipline, and we all should be we all should be uh, reading God's word. We all should be spending time in prayer. We all should be having that that fellowship with Him. Um, but sometimes we slip. So uh, being committed to to the reading of uh, of the in, entire uh, New and Old Testament within a year is is just a really good spiritual exercise. And um, it's, it's just really good to 
be digging into scriptures in that way. But I, I just want to say this. We need to be careful uh, not to just look at, and I really appreciated what you, were, what you were saying, Janet. We really need to not just look at it as a task to get done, but as a time of fellowship with the Lord, mm. a time of, of learning, and a, a time when He can, can get your attention and maybe speak directly to you. I think, I think in, in time with the Lord, you've got to be listening and, and just looking forward to what He will share with you. And, and I think that makes it just a, a powerful, powerful time. Mm, fantastic. Fantastic. So, so this, this coming year, we're going to be putting a challenge out of reading through the New Testament over the next 52 weeks. That sounds a little bit easier, doesn't it, than the whole Bible? But reading through the New Testament over the next 52 weeks. And so, so, so from last year, from last year, what, what encouragement or what learnings, what advice would you, would you say to, 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 to all those out there in, in internet land, uh, all those people listening, that, that, that if, if they're kind of on the fence, I don't know if I should do this or not, what, what advice would you, would you, would you give to them? Well, num number one, for sure, it's worth it. It's very worth it. Uh, there is so much to learn about, about God and about his interaction with his, the people that he called to faith. And um, so it's, it's worth it in that sense. And, and for, for me, um, I, just, I just found you just grew you grew in your intimacy with the Lord, in, in with your knowledge of Him, and His um, His His call for His people to be like Him, and uh, to listen to Him, and and though they failed, um, He He always He always came back to them. He always they were faithful, faithless sometimes, but he was right there to pick them up as soon as they turned back to focus on him. And so it, it, it's so worth it in your personal journey. Um, you know, I found, you know, that it, it really helped because uh, God knows our thoughts. And so um, even my thoughts became more uh, open to me before the Lord. And so you're able to uh, examine things and and see if it is of the Lord and it, if it's if it's not and and know that He's there <laughs> to um, to take your admission <laughs> of wrongness if it's not right and and um, and offers you forgiveness and and strength to to um, change to reduce those thoughts or to move away from those thoughts, to recognize that they're not, they're not the mind of Christ. He wants us to have the mind of Christ. And so I think when I, when I say intimacy, that's the kind of intimacy that um, reading his word, because his, I mean, his word, the word was made flesh and that's Jesus. It'd be, it's like Jesus talking to me. And so it's, it's such a, an opportunity to build your relationship with the God who made us. So, uh, mm. yeah, it's very worth it. Awesome. Awesome. And, and I would say just do it. Mm. I would say just do it. It's, it's a great opportunity. The, the Old Testament is, is a little bit more challenging, is a little bit more uh, difficult to understand, but it's rich. It's very rich. The New Testament is less veiled, and it's easier to understand, so it makes a great, uh, 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 great opportunity to, uh, to learn more about uh, the history, to learn more about uh, God and His working um, in our lives, how He came to the earth, how, how He touched us, and how He's transforming us. Um, there's, there's no question that if you do this, that you will grow closer to the Lord. If you listen, if you um, seek to understand what, uh, what is taking place, 
And, and, and just know that, that he desires you to have that intimate relationship with him. And this is one way of, of nurturing that and, and making that come to pass. So I would say do it. This is a great opportunity. Fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. Look, I want to thank Janet. I want to thank Rob for uh, coming in and doing this in kind of a unique setting here and just, uh, just, just such wise words uh, from both of them. want to thank them. Let's give them a, a virtual hand of applause for coming in. So appreciate it. Right. So you heard the challenge. You heard the challenge there. 52 weeks through the New Testament, reading through the New Testament part of the Bible this year. If, if you go down to uh, the YouTube, uh, the description on, on YouTube, there's a link just below that description, and that will take you to a, to a PDF right here that lays out for you the 52 weeks of reading, Monday to Friday, chapter a day. And I, I just really uh, would challenge you this year as you start in here in January to, uh, to, to really seriously uh, look towards that. that. That's fantastic. It'd be awesome to see so many of so many of us um, jump in and take that challenge this year. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray together. God, we, we thank you for this word that you have given us, this word by which we are drawn closer to you, that we experience your presence. And now as we come around your word, we pray uh, now that uh, by your spirit, you would help us to understand, help us to learn this morning. Father, we, um, we pray that in, despite not being physically present, despite all the things that could, that could hinder, uh, that could hinder my speaking and our listening, we pray that uh, you would have your way. Pray that um, as, as we come around your word this morning, you would do great things. Uh, because you're the one doing it. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today, uh, I want us to look at something vital, something critical, uh, that, centers around, that, that centers around rest. That centers around rest. Um, and just thinking about rest here for a minute. When I say rest, not talking about sleep. Uh, there, there's a difference between sleep and rest. Uh, both involve a, a not doing, an inactivity of some kind. But sleep, sleep involves a, a, a turning off, a, a sensory detachment, as experts would say. So, so, so in other words, you could, be, you could be resting, but not sleeping. Uh, resting involves this sense of calm, this sense of, of, of stress lowering, loosening your grip. I'm taking, I'm taking a rest. And so we're going to spend a, a little bit of time today on this word rest. It's been, um, it's been interesting. You know, if you talk to people, you ask them, uh, how was your Christmas? And you get different answers, but frequent answers might be, well, uh, this year, it might be, well, it was okay. It, it was quiet. Uh, stayed local. Didn't, didn't really do much. I've heard answers like that, but, but an answer that I haven't heard a whole lot is that Christmas was restful. Maybe, maybe you've heard it. Maybe yours was. I'm not saying no. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Uh, People, I'm sure, had restful Christmases, but, but, but my Christmas was restful is a seldomly heard comment. And, and, and just to take that a little bit further, perhaps, perhaps we're not saying that so much because we're, we're living in a time of unrest. We're, we're, these days, are, there, there's, a, there's a prevailing unrest here uh, not only not only here locally, but but I, I would suggest on the planet overall, there's a prevailing unrest. 
you think of what could be some of the possible contributors to this prevailing unrest, it's, it's perhaps kind of obvious that, 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 that we're, we're almost two years into a pandemic, that if you listen to the news, you'll hear something probably daily about climate and the environment. You'll hear about the economy and, and inflation and, 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 and some threats that are economic threats. You'll hear about uh, isolation, individualism. There, there's civil unrest, social unrest, environmental unrest. Uh, you know, just to name a few, we're living in a time of unrest. And just happy new year. <laughs> That's, you're going, Darren, this is not why I tuned in. January 2nd is to hear about all the unrest. So thanks for being so upbeat. Um, more of this, what we need. Well, well look, 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 listen to this and then, then pivot here. Pivot here on this. Look, look at this item by contrast. Look at the words of Jesus in Matthew 11. Look, look down at verse 28 here where, where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I, I'll give you rest. This is an incredibly relevant verse for these days. It's a familiar verse. I, I know many of us have heard it. It's relevant, yeah, obviously it's a reminder for us, but, but it's, it's relevant because those, those who know something of this rest that Jesus is talking about need to model it like never before. That if Jesus promises rest, then those who are seeking to follow Jesus need to model this rest somehow, need to demonstrate it, because there is so much unrest. We need to model what, what is rest in the midst of unrest. It's hugely relevant, but we can't model what we don't really understand. And, and so what is Jesus talking about here? What he's not talking about, he's not talking about is, is, a, is a remove yourself from culture uh, notion here. He's not off an escape hatch. He's talking about rest in the midst of unrest, in the midst of conditions of unrest, rest in the unrest. So for our time today, uh, I want us to take a, a fresh look at what Jesus is talking about here uh, when, when he offers rest. And, and if, if, you're, if you tuned in this morning and, and, and you'd, you'd, you'd identify yourself as Christian, that, then you're not, you need to know this not only for yourself, but for others. To, to model that rest to others. But if you're here uh, tuned in today and, and maybe you wouldn't identify yourself as Christian, but, but, but you're continuing to explore, explore, ask questions. Awesome you've tuned in. Fantastic. And, and I hope what we talk about this morning will help your understanding today in just a really key, a really core area of the Christian life. So we're going to frame, frame up what we're talking about here. We're going to do it in three parts. But before we do that in three parts, just time out. There, there, there's, we're going to start with a word. We're going to start with a, with a definition here. And then we'll go into our three parts. But there's a word. There's a word called sanctification. Let's see if I can spell it. Let's see if you can see it. Sanctification. Uh, what does that word mean? Sanctification is the process of becoming more like Jesus. Sanctification, theological term, becoming more like Jesus, more godly, more, more holy. Sanctification is an all play. Uh, just bring up 1 Corinthians 4, 3. Uh, the first part of that verse says, this is the will of God your sanctification. And he goes on, talks about a specific area. But, but this is God's desire. This is God's will. 
your sanctification. It's an all play. Well, well, that's the goal of a Christian life, that, that, that to mature on your faith walk. I, I, like, to sketch it, I like to sketch it this way, that, that if this is, this is your life, okay, this is a, a, a timeline here, and there's this point, there's this point where, where you, you would say you, you came to faith, where you, where you received uh, by faith the work of Jesus, what Jesus has done on the cross, that, that you gave him your sin, he gave you his righteousness, that, that you confessed your sin, you invite him to be your, your, your savior, your Lord of your life. There, there's that point in your life. And, and there's also another point in your life there would be a point where you, where you go to, I like to say, the other side of eternity. The, the point where uh, you will pass away from this earth and you will, what you know by faith, you, you will know face to face. There are these two points, but the, the, in between these two points is sanctification, is, is this process of growing. I like to think of it that way. That, that this, this word sanctification is going to be an important word for this morning. So that, let's move into these three parts here now, looking, looking at rest. And it takes us to part one. Part one we'll call rest, rest and sanctification. That's kind of messy, sorry. Rest and sanctification. And, and, and it goes like, goes like this. Our lack our lack of understanding of sanctification can be a barrier for rest. What am I talking about here? Our lack of understanding of sanctification can be a barrier for rest. Let me explain that. It, be, because we can spend more time running from God uh, means we can put more pressure on ourselves because we think God's not happy with us. Um, let me explain it. Let me explain it this way. There is the there's the grace of God, uh, the grace of God in Jesus, that Jesus came, He lived among us, He went to the cross, He bled, He died, He rose again, He ascended to heaven. There, there is the work. There is the the, the incredible grace of Jesus. If we start to doubt that, that, that the work of Jesus was not enough for us, if we, start to, if we start to add to this work with our own works, it, it, it's, a, it, it's the notion that goes like this, that, that I'm, not, I'm not living a very good Christian life. I'm really kind of sliding back. I'm really kind of, 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 of drifting a bit. And, and so, you know, I, I, I got to get back. I got to get back to church. I, I, I've got to get back to church so God will be more pleased with me. And, and, and I've got to do more. I've got to do more good stuff. So, 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 so that I, I've just got my, my points balance. My balance will go up a little. God will be more pleased with me. And, and, and giving. I, I've, I've, gotta, I, I've just got to give more. Be, because I, I haven't, been, haven't been doing a lot of giving. And so, so if, if, I, you know, if, I, if, if I go to church once in a while, if I, if I, if I, if I do some good stuff, if I, if I give some stuff, then, 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 then God will be more pleased with me. That, then, then I'll be more accepted by God. What, what, what is that? That's, that's adding to the work of Jesus with our own work. It, it, it's, it's trying to put a few more points in the account type of thinking. Well, that kind of thinking can lead to two things. Uh, is, is one, that, that that can carry a massive amount of guilt to go with it. Because, because, because there's this feeling that I need to keep doing more. God's not pleased with me. I need to keep doing more. There, there, there's that notion. But, but then there's also the notion that, that man, I, I just can't do that. I, I just can't keep up with it. And so 
there, there's that point where you just kind of go, I, I just give up. I can't do it. And, and, and so when we hear this verse of, 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 come to me and I'll give you rest, that just doesn't register. That, that just doesn't make sense. There's no context for it. Which takes us to, which takes us to part two. Part two we'll call grace and sanctification. Grace and sanctification. Come with me to Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, in verses 1 to 11, we're not going to look at it right now, but in verses 1 to 11, uh, Paul is, is talking talking to the church in Philippi, and he, he's saying to them, he's saying to them that, that imitate Jesus in your lives. Imitate his humility in, in, in that putting others, thinking of others more highly than yourself. And, and, and using the example of Jesus, he talks about that in verses 1 to 11. And, and then he gets them, he asks them to respond in verse 12. Just look at that for a minute. In Philippians 2.12, he says this. He says, continue to work out your salvation. Some translations would say sanctification. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And, 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 and you know, we, we kind of like that part of that verse. We, 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 we like that part because it's like, it's like, God, thank you for what you've done at the cross Thank you for, for saving us from the wrath of our sin, but we're going to take it, we're going to pick it up now and take it from here. Uh, we'll, we'll take it from here. We'll figure this out. Uh, we, we'll get sanctified. We'll work out our sanctification, our salvation. The problem with that, if, if you look at verse 12, if you're going to look at verse 12, you have to look at the next verse. You have to look at verse 13 to finish the thought that Paul's talking about here. So, so, so look down at verse 13. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to fulfill his good purpose. Did you catch that? It's God who works in you. In other words, it's God, it's, it's, it's God who saves you, but it's also God who sanctifies you. He does that. You, you don't save yourself. You don't sanctify yourself. Uh, in, other words, in other words, all the, all the work that we do is driven, stay with me, is driven by grace. It's a response to his grace. In other words, we don't add to his grace. What we do is a response to his grace. We, we don't add to it. We respond to it by doing these things. Doing we're doing theology this morning. <laughs> We're doing theology here, but this, this is important for our understanding that we don't solely grow ourselves. That's huge. That's huge. You, 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 I've got to teach that to you. You've got to hear it. We don't grow ourselves. It's, it's, it's why the Bible records that, that we, again in Philippians, that Paul says we put no confidence in our own strength. But by, by trying to measure our own goodness, by what we see in our lives, by what we do, by, if, if we do that, we'll never find rest. But instead, we put our confidence in him, in what he's done on our behalf. He's making us into the image of Christ. Uh, Hebrews 12, 2, it, 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 not on your screen there, but he's the author and perfecter of our faith. He's made us positionally perfect through his son and, and, and he is completing the work of making us into the image of his son, the work of sanctification. 
Let me just put up one more verse. I, I just want to reinforce this with one more verse. So, so, so take this down. First Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. 23 and 24. L listen to what Paul says. He says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit body soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Do you see that? He's making me. He's growing me. He's sanctifying me. You see that there in 1 Thessalonians. One way of, one way of checking that this is, this is your... This is your understanding. One way of checking this is, is, when, is when you repent. When, when we, is, is to look at our repentance. When we, when we mess up. When, when, we, when, we, when we do something contrary to how God wants us to live. When, in other words, when, when we sin. The question is, is, is our repentance, stay with me, is our repentance grace-driven or is it works-driven? If it's grace-driven, then when we disobey, what do we do? We, we beeline it to the Father. And, and, we, and we, just, we, we just run back to Him with no fear of repercussion. Because Jesus has taken our punishment. He is perfecting us. We just come and we fall on His grace. If we're, if we're not grace-driven... That then we have this feeling that, man, I've, I've, I've got I've to make it up to God somehow. I've, I've got I've to clean myself up somehow before I can go to him. I've got I've, I've to add, I've got to add to what Jesus has done. I, I've got to get good enough before I can go back to God. It shows that we don't, that shows we don't understand sanctification. In other words, that all the effort in the Christian life is driven by God's grace. This, this is kind of hard stuff. This is potentially hard stuff. If, 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 if you were raised, if you, if you come from a background where there's a notion of, notion of, of okay, I, I've, I've become a Christian. Now I go, now figure it out. Now go and mature and, 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 and do that. Do that. Figure that out yourself. Grow yourself up. Type of notion. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. Um, yes, mature. Absolutely. But, but the shift is, is that it's not all about you doing the work. We don't do it to add to his grace. We do it as a response to grace. The question then at this point, okay, I, I get that, Darren, but, but then what, what do I do? If God's the one who does the growing, then, then what do I do? That takes us to part three. We'll just call our our work. What is it that we do then? What's our task in all this? If it's all grace, if God's the one who sanctifies, then, th th then what do I do? Because th th there's a sense where if, if that's how it works, if, if it's just God's unrestrained grace, um, if God's grace is that big and that all, consum all, all, all encompassing, then, then why not take advantage of it? Uh, then, then why not? It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter how I live. I, it, it could just lead to, to, to you could say, license and, and lawlessness. <laughs> and, and it's here, it's here that Paul couldn't disagree more. That, 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 that here, final point, just stay with me on this, but if we jump to Romans 6, in, in verse 1, Paul, Paul would say this. He would say, what shall we say then? 
Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? That's the question. That, that, that God's a God of grace. He pours it out without measure in Jesus. Not, not a little, but a lot. But when we understand how big that is, everything changes. That, 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 that Paul would say there's, there's no passivity. There, there, there's no apathy. Be, because we want, we want to see God's grace. It's, it's, it's so good. It's so, it, it, it draws us that we want to be in the middle of that. We, we want to experience that. We want to, we want to respond to that. We don't add to it. We respond to it. And, and, and so we, we come and worship. We, 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 we do those good works. We, 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 we're, we're generous. We, we do those things in response to His grace. We don't add to it. We respond to it. So our task, our work, is to respond. Now, I, I get this, that, you know, theology morning here, but that, that all sounds a little... That all sounds a little textbooky, and 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 I get that. But rest comes when we stop trying to grow ourselves, when we surrender control of our self-guided faith walks, and we focus on the grace of God, it, the undeserved love that we receive from God. That, that, that as, we, as we focus on that. But that focus isn't going to happen unless we're turned towards it. Unless we're focused on it. And, and, and that's why filling our, our minds, filling our hearts with that grace is so important. And, and how do we do that? We do that as we fill ourselves in the Word. As we, as we're reading the word, as we heard from Janet and Rob this morning so well, that 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 happens when we're turned to the word. As we make space in our lives, that God's word will get hold of us. That meeting with God every day, as as I said, it's it's not just reading, but it it's it's experiencing that grace. It's it, it, it's experiencing God's work. As we read. And, 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 and that's the way of staying connected. Staying current. And, and, and in growing. In this process of sanctification. We don't grow ourselves. But we put ourselves in positions. Where God's, where God's work can happen. Where he can grow us. When we're turned towards his grace. So, it's, it's, so, 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 so this, this, this Bible this Bible reading plan, it, it, it's not a self-help thing. It, it's not a self-maturing exercise. That God is at work. He's at work as we give him time in the word and prayer. That he can fulfill his desires as we make space and time and discipline. That's rest. I don't have to grow myself. I can rest in who he is making me to be as I show up and be moldable. And I can rest in the things that aren't yet finished. Why? Because it is God who works in me to will and act according to fulfill his good purpose. Isn't that cool? I hope that makes sense. That, that, that's, that's a theology morning here this morning, but just, just, just let me encourage you then. Knowing that, knowing that, let, let, let me encourage you towards whether this is the first time you've uh, committed to a Bible reading plan, the first or the 50th. Uh, as Rob said, just do it. To, to just do it. Make yourself available to try it. And, and let's pray that God uses this to bring growth and rest to you and influence to others around you. Let's, let's pray. Uh, God, this morning, 
um, today. We, we, we thank you for how you work through your word, how you, uh, how you do this growing of us, this maturing of us, the sanctifying of us. Oh God, it, it, it's, it's just our prayer this morning. Uh, Lord, wherever we are, whatever screen we're watching here, uh, God, it's our prayer to you this morning. Uh, God, grow us this year. Grow me in 2022. Help me to be into your word like never before. And, and may I experience, may I experience as I give you that time and space, may I experience you doing what you promised to do. Carrying out your will and sanctifying. So God, we just, we just pray for that desire that we would desire to be that this year. That you would accomplish great things as we give you this space. We thank you for the finished work of Jesus, not only rescuing us from the, the wrath of our sin, but, but also uh, that also his grace is complete. God, that, that we can be mature, that we can grow. God, that we don't have to add to his grace. Thank you for his sacrifice at the cross. Thank you for his broken body and his shed blood that we remember now, God, as we, as we move into this time of communion. And so we pray, God, uh, with, with thanksgiving um, for, for Jesus, his body and his blood. His name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a, a time of communion here very briefly and then close off with a song. So I, I just invite you, hope you're prepared with that, uh, with that time of communion. Uh, if, if not, I just hit pause and get something ready and, um, and we'll proceed. But Paul says, I received from the Lord what I, what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you, to do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread together. Paul says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood for the remission of for the remission of sins. And, and to do this whenever you drink it. In remembrance of me. So I invite you just to take the cup. And let's drink together. With thankfulness. Paul says for whenever. You eat this bread and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death. Until he comes. We're going to close out with a song from the worship team, and then I'll, I'll come and uh, pronounce the benediction.
want to thank you for joining in today, for joining together. Um, hopefully this is something that will only be for a, a week or two. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back together in person, have that opportunity uh, sooner than later. And so now to the, to the King Eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless each one of you. Have a great week.